all right, so you've decided to go and get yourself a P1 or a gas blowback uh, pistol or something for gel ball, and you wanna make sure you're good to go, you wanna make sure you have the right gas, all that sort of stuff. So look, let's quickly go over the basics so you know what you're gonna need, whether you buy this in advance or if you can get it from the retailers, you know, wherever you get your, your pistol or whatever else. That's entirely up to you. I don't know who's gonna be stocking what, but I can tell you the basic things that you're going to need. So, I'll move this out of the way. The first thing everyone's gonna to wanna to get, obviously, is some gas. Now, we've been running the three-in-one duster gas from Bunnings. It has 350 grams of the fluoroethane. Now, it is flammable, right? So keep that in mind, like you put a lighter to it, it's gonna cause issues. For the most part, look, this is gas that you use to clean your electronics and all that sort of stuff. Now, it is a lower power gas than what the P1 is designed to use, but that gas, the R134A, it is in fact, as far as I'm aware, it is illegal to vent that into the atmosphere in Australia. So do your own research on that. If you choose to ignore that advice, that's entirely up to you. Now with any gas that you run, whether it's this, whether it's something else, or even propane, you will wanna be mixing in some silicon oil. Now the silicon oil that we've used is this one here. So Abby's silicon oil number 35. We'll try and get a close up for that for you and we'll provide links to all this stuff. Now this silicon gun oil is, it's actually highly recommended for the similar sport to what we play for gas blowbacks, simply because it's literally, it's designed for these mechanics, for the, the kind of O-rings and seals and everything that we use. So what happens essentially is with your magazine, you wanna make sure that you're conditioning it with some stuff to protect it, right? So the silicon oil is gonna get mixed into your gas uh, as it kind of enters the mag. I'll show you how to do that. And what it's gonna do is it'll help with uh, protecting the valves, the seals internally, and all that sort of stuff as well. So make sure you get some of this, and you can also use it to uh, as a bit of maintenance on your blaster because you will need to continue your oil and grease it just to keep the slide operating, all that sort of stuff as well. So get yourself some of that uh, in the packet. This is what it looks like in a packet. All right, so go find some of that, get yourself some of that. Um, this one bottle, I think it's lasted quite a while, uh, but I put an order in for the boys, so we ended up getting two bottles each just to make sure, okay? Because you are gonna mix it into your gas and you're gonna use it to oil and grease your gun. So I just don't know how long one bottle will last you. So maybe get a second one and you do that. Now, the other thing you need is this little nozzle. So the gas can, or the, the three-in-one air duster can, usually comes with a little, like a lid like this, right? Because you're gonna actually, Right, this is how it's normally used. You can use it to spray off electronics and all that sort of stuff, but that's useless. This piece here is useless for you. So essentially you just rip this thing off, it's very easy, and you'll expose the little nozzle on top of the can. The issue is that when you go to fill a magazine through the bottom uh, valve here, that is usually too fat. It won't actually fit onto the, it won't actually fit onto that little valve. So you need to get an adapter. Now with that, there are adapters available online, again, for the similar sport overseas, and they have uh, a much longer nozzle and everything. It's kind of designed exactly for this. So you can order some of those yourself. Um, I don't know how you go about importing them and whatnot. Hopefully some retailers will stock those. But in the meantime, so because that might take a few weeks to get to you anyway, in the meantime, you can get butane adapters. Now, this can here of Samba gas, all right, so that's just standard lighter gas, blah, blah, blah. You get that from Bunnings, there's also butane available from, I think, J Carr and a few other stores. Now, in on this particular can, and the different brands do it differently, but on this particular can, you'll see in the lid, there's little cutouts here. So I've already taken this nozzle out, but there are all these little um, adapters in there. And the idea is that, you know, normally when you're filling a lighter or whatever, um, they have different size uh, nozzles to fill. So all you do on, if you're using the uh, Samba, Number one is what I've taken out. And the number one will basically fit straight on top of your can. And that should be small enough to fit into that filling nozzle there. You've just got to be careful with a couple things. Like these things, the more you push on them, they uh, they squish and they, they kind of get wrecked a little bit. So it can affect how well you fill the magazine. So either get yourself a couple of cans or I don't know, find some other ones just to have as a backup as well. What else do you need? So the only other thing I can think of is you probably want to get your hands on something like this. Now this is absolutely not required. You don't need one of these, uh, but it does make life a lot easier. So this is just, it's a speed loader that loads single gels at a time, right? So you kind of open the lid 
and you pour your gels in. There you go. So you pour your gels in the top. Close the lid and you've got this little lever here. So as you push that lever, it's gonna give you singular gels. And the reason you want one of those is because when you load your magazines, they're gonna to need to go, the gels are gonna to need to go into that little rail. So you can kind of just uh, fill it up as such, right? And you'll see that as it goes in, it's kind of stacking where that spring goes, right? So that makes it nice and easy. You don't, like you don't need one. Um, you, you can just do it by hand, there's nothing wrong with it. I've just found that, I've done both, right? But I just find that that is actually easier, especially with this magazine because it helps you, you can kind of tilt the magazine as you load it and it gives you that little zigzag pattern, right? So you get the proper double stack. So that's very handy. Now, I don't know, I imagine retailers will start selling these on their own. I can't see why not, but I believe you get these with the, like the Python uh, or revolver type gel blasters to load it into the little cylinders. So yeah, so try and get your hands on one of those. I don't know where this came from because Guido was very kind and gave this to me for free. So yeah, get your hands on that stuff, right? That's, that's the basics of what you're gonna need. Now, this stuff aside, I've had some questions about how do you, like how do you fill your magazine and how do you mix your oil in? It's actually really easy, right? So firstly, take your nozzle off, whatever adapter you're using. Um, and this should be the same for most of your gases. The, the propane stuff, uh, you should be able to do something similar. The adapter you get for that is a bit bigger. And some of the ones that you can get have a little, um, they have a port where you can just put the oil in. So if you get your hands on that, then go for it. But just keep in mind, you 90% certainty you won't be able to run propane out of the box. You need to make changes. So running dust to gas, you take your lid off, right? Let's just do an example here with a brand new can. So you take your lid off as such, because you don't need that. Once this little uh, nozzle is exposed, you take your silicon oil and you add a couple of drops into the top right there. You usually don't need to squeeze the bottle too much. Now, you'll also add some into your nozzle or your adapter, whatever you want to call it. All right, so fill that up as such and pop that on nicely, right? So that'll sit on top. So essentially what's happening here is you're gonna have um, silicon sitting inside this tube and it's sitting inside the nozzle as well. So when you go to expel the gas, it's actually gonna spray that silicon uh, into you know, whatever your target is. Now on top of that, in terms of your magazine, before you go spraying anything in there, you'll probably wanna chuck a couple of dots uh, or drops onto the, uh, the fill nozzle here. All right, so you can drop that straight in there. In fact, I might be able to, there we go. So there's the bumper plate off so you can see it a little bit easier. Um, so yeah, drop a, put a couple drops there. And you'll also want to, now I'm not gonna press this, right? So this is the, um, this is the valve or the, the pin that gets struck and it lets gas out. There is gas currently in this magazine. If you push that, it'll purge gas out of the end. So pro tip, don't ever point that at someone. Ideally, don't ever purge using that. But if you do, make sure it's not pointing towards anyone. Now, um, but what's worth doing is, uh, as a part of your magazine maintenance, make sure you put some silicon around this because you wanna make sure that that is able to, um, that that is protected so that it's always able to get depressed and all that sort of stuff. The moment you start having problems with seals, uh, you're gonna start having problems with your magazine all around, okay? So make sure that's taken care of as well. So it's as simple as that. Now, um, from here, all you need to do is nozzle, all right? Make sure that's on your can push the nozzle into the fill, uh, the filling valve. Now, with this, these adapters are not, here we go, these adapters are not uh, designed for this purpose, but they work. So what can happen is you can get a bit of leakage out of the top, right? So well, closest to the can because it's, you know, too big and not a good enough seal. And you can also get it off the bottom piece here as well. So as a part of that, if you don't know what you're doing, it's your first time or whatever else, I do recommend, you know, chuck some iPro on, even chuck some gloves on because you don't necessarily want to get the fluid that comes out uh, all over your hands. I don't actually know if there's any, uh, I don't actually know if you can, you know, like damage your skin with it. There's some first aid advice and stuff on the can. The main thing is it'll burn your eyes if it gets in your eyes, that's for sure. But the, the, the actual temperature of this stuff, you will get a cold burn if you let it sitting on your skin too much. So try not to do that. So yeah, so you might get some leakage. 
Um, that should be solved if you have the proper adapter nozzle from our other sport. And all it really means is you're going to be losing gas. So keeping in mind, like if you've paid $18 for this can, or maybe you've got a cheaper one, um, you are wasting a bit of money the more leakage there is. Uh, but until you have the right nozzle, it might be an issue. Now, when you gas the magazine, so I'll depress this in a second and we'll see how that goes. When you gas this magazine, you can overfill it and you can underfill it. So what happens when it gets overfilled is this nozzle becomes very difficult to discharge. So what will happen when you put it in your blaster is one of two things. If it's way too much pressure, your blaster will, it'll strike this pin and nothing will happen because it's too hard for it to, to cycle. Now, if it's just a little bit overfilled, it'll be able to discharge gas, but your blaster may or may not fire correctly. Like it, it may not actually fully fire the gel, but you'll get fluid coming out. Uh, or in one case that I know of, the slide will come flying off, okay? So ideally you don't wanna do that. The recommended fill time for the, for the gas from the manufacturer is usually 45 seconds. In my experience, about 15 to 20 seconds with this gas and you're getting close to overfilled, right? So just, you have to play around with it. It's about 15 grams of gas. Eventually you'll start to get a feel for it. So let's just have a look. All right, so you'll see the leakage that's happening here. That's the kind of stuff you don't want to get on your hands. And I'll stop there because there is already gas in that magazine. Now, if you take this base plate off, make sure you actually put that back on before you go firing as well. But normally you can fill it straight through there. When you are feeling the gas in this, you'll actually, if you feel this, you'll feel that the temperature drops. So as this gas expands or goes into another container, um, it is actually, it has a chilling effect. And it's important to note because when you go to fire your blaster, you need to make sure the magazine ideally is at about room or environment temperature. If it's cold, your blaster may not work very well. And again, this is a, this is a gas blowback thing. This is not a P1 thing or, you know, whatever products you want to make sure that that temperature is, is, you know, roughly what the environmental temperature is. Uh, and then everything's great. That should be fine. But that's it. So the only other, so when you are discharging it though, is so as I've, I've said in some other videos that the the magazine charge, at least on the P1 mag, the gas should last you about four or five magazines worth like of shots. So like you can go, go through that four or five times before needing to regas it. If you've only got one magazine like I do and you just like spam shooting it, so you know, you empty that, quickly add more gels and then do it again you'll actually find that the magazine's temperature will drop again. So you may kind of get some performance dip as that cools down. But for the most part, I think, you know, for those, for you, for you guys that are running around out there and when you've got multiple mags, it shouldn't be an issue because I think 90% of the time you'll empty the mag, swap mags, empty the next mag and so on. So by the time you go to reuse this, it should have already gone back to the standard temperature. It shouldn't be an issue. But that's it. That's how you gas mags. That's how you, uh, you know, that's how you run all that. Now, if you ever run into a situation where you have too much gas, um, so again, you'll know that because the, when you try to fire, nothing will happen because it can't depress that valve and you'll find that it's actually physically quite difficult to do it yourself. Or you can actually stick, like don't put it in your ear, but you can actually listen next to the magazine and sometimes you'll hear a, a slight squealing because the gas is trying to escape out. So if that happens, what you can do is don't press this, right? Some people do, but ideally don't because you can damage your seals. You can get your adapter uh, or a longer one, like you can use those, uh, the, the needles that you use to pump up like a basketball or whatever, right? All you need to do is depress that valve, right? So you can actually come in here uh, and you can push down. Don't block the valve, just push from the sides, right? I don't know if you can hear that, but you can actually let the gas out through the bottom. So you do that bit by bit until it's good to go. So I suspect, look, I, I don't think this is a tedious thing that you'll be doing with gas blowbacks all the time. I just think until you get used to roughly, you know, what is the right amount of fill. So, you know, count in your head how, how many seconds you're doing. Um, so until you get that right, um, you know, it'll be a bit of mucking around. But after that, you'll just, you'll get it, you know, first time every time. It'll be all good. But that's it. That's how you fill a mag. That's how you deal with your gas.